distinguished heads of state and heads of government, ministers, heads of international organizations, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, in this lovely season of early summer when every living thing is full of energy, I wish to welcome all of you, distinguished guests representing over 100 countries, to attend this important forum on the Belt and Road Initiative held in Beijing. This is indeed a gathering of great minds. In the coming two days, I hope that by engaging in a whole discuss of an exchange of views, we will contribute to pursuing the Belt and Road Initiative, a project of the century, so that it will bring benefit to people across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, over 2,000 years ago, our ancestors trekking across vast steppes and deserts opened the transcontinental passage connecting Asia, Europe, and Africa, known today as the Silk Road. Our ancestors navigating rough waters created sea routes linking the east with the west, namely the maritime Silk Road. These ancient Silk Roads opened windows of friendly exchanges among nations, adding a splendid chapter to the history of human progress. The thousand-year-old gilded bronze silkworm displayed at China's Shanxi History Museum and the Balidon shipwreck discovered in Indonesia bear witness to this exciting period of history. Spanning thousands of miles and thousands of years, the ancient Silk Roads embodied the spirit of peace and cooperation, openness and inclusiveness, mutual learning and mutual benefit. The Silk Road spirit has become a great heritage of human civilization. Peace and cooperation. In China's Han Dynasty, around 140 BC, Zhang Qian, a royal emissary, left Chang'an, capital of the Han Dynasty. He traveled westward on a mission of peace and opened an overland route linking the east and the west, a daring undertaking which came to be known as Zhang Qian's journey to the western regions. Centuries later, in the years of Tang, Song, and Yuan dynasties, such routes, both over land and sea, had boomed. Great adventurers, including Du Huan of China, Marco Polo of Italy, and Ibn Battuta of Morocco, left their footprints along these ancient routes. In the early 15th century, Zheng He, the famous Chinese navigator in the Ming Dynasty, made seven voyages to the Western Seas, a feat which is still remembered today. These pioneers won their place in history not as conquerors with warships, guns, or swords. Rather, they are remembered as friendly emissaries leading camel caravans and sailing treasure-loaded ships. Generation after generation, the Silk Road's travelers have built a bridge for peace and for East-West cooperation. Openness and inclusiveness. The ancient Silk Roads spanned the valleys of the Nile, the Tigris and Euphrates, 
the Indus and Ganges, and the Yellow and Yangtze rivers. They connected the birthplaces of the Egyptian, Babylonian, Indian, and Chinese civilizations. They connected the lands of Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam, as well as homes of people of different nationalities and races. These routes enabled people of various civilizations, religions, and race to interact with and embrace each other with open mind. In the course of exchange, they fostered a spirit of mutual respect and engaged in a common endeavor to pursue prosperity. Today, ancient cities of Jiuquan, Dunhuang, Tulufan, Samarkand, Baghdad, and Constantinople, and ancient seaports of Ningbo, Quanzhou, Guangzhou, Beihai, Colombo, Jeddah, and Alexandria, are standing as the living monuments to these past interactions. This part of history shows that civilization thrives with openness and nations prosper through exchange. Mutual learning. The ancient silk roads were not portrayed only, they boosted the flow of knowledge as well. Through these routes, Chinese, silk, porcelain, lacquer work, and ironware were shipped to the West, while pepper, flax, spices, grape, and pomegranate entered China. Through these routes, Buddhism, Islam, and Arab astronomy calendar and medicine found their way to China, while China's four great inventions and silkworm breeding spread to other parts of the world. More importantly, the exchange of goods and know-how spurred new ideas. For example, Buddhism originated in India, it blossomed in China, and was enriched in Southeast Asia. Confucianism, which was born in China, gained appreciation by European thinkers such as Leibniz and Voltaire. Herein lies the appeal of mutual learning, mutual benefit. The ancient Silk Roads witnessed the bustling scenes of visits and trade over land and the bustling scenes of ships calling at ports. Along these major arteries of interaction, capital, technology and people flowed freely and goods resources and benefits were widely shared. The ancient prosperous cities of Almata, Samarkand and Chang'an and ports of Sur and Guangzhou had thrived. So did the Roman Empire as well as Parthia and Kushan kingdoms. The Han and Tang dynasties of China entered the Golden Age. The ancient Silk Roads brought prosperity to these regions and boosted their development. History is our best teacher. The glory of the ancient Silk Roads shows that geographical distance is not insurmountable. If we take the first courageous step toward each other, we can embark on a path leading to friendship, shared benefit, peace, harmony, and a better future.